I've gotten a lot of messages over the last couple of weeks about two very specific things. Number one, my M6 and the upgrades or modifications I had done. People wanting to know not only what I had done, but also whether or not it was worth it. As well as my SL2 being a daily carry kind of camera. Uh, I recently sold my Leica M10P, which was basically the digital version of this. Uh, it's, you know, this has been my main camera for almost eight years now. So using the SL2 uh, as my daily carry has been uh, very different but I've also really been enjoying it and I've kind of noticed a few things that have made me shoot a little bit differently as a result of that. So I wanted to basically answer those two questions. Uh, today we're going to talk all about the M6 and the upgrades or modifications I had done, where I sent them, how much it cost, all of that. Uh, and then probably next week we'll dive into the SL2 as sort of a daily carry kind of camera and what it's like going from my M6 to something so different for just everyday life. It's all gear talk, but it's all gear that I actually own and use every single day. So I'm going to split that up into two separate videos. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. But uh, yeah, let's start with the M6. I knew my M6 needed some work because on some of my film scans, I was getting a really dark edge on the right side of the frame. And from other cameras I've owned in the past, I knew that had to be something with the shutter. And I kind of posted about it on Instagram just saying, you know, I noticed it was uh, having some issues and I was going to have to send it out soon. And that's actually when Jaden Rosado of Red Dot Repair sent me a DM on Instagram. He went on to explain exactly what was causing that dark edge, like in insane detail. It was pretty clear right away that he knew way more about the mechanics of Leica cameras than I do, which makes sense because he works on them and repairs them. And he told me he'd been a fan of the channel for a long time and wanted to offer basically a CLA just fixing this issue for free as a way to say thanks for all the videos, which I I thought was insanely generous, so I took him up on that. While it was there, he asked if there was anything else I wanted him to do to the M6. And I've never modified anything on this camera before. Uh, it's just been a stock M6 TTL for almost eight years now that I've been using it. But one of the first things he mentioned that he offers is the MP viewfinder upgrade. If you're unaware, the Leica M6 has some viewfinder flare issues. Basically, in certain kinds of light, if it's hitting the viewfinder or the rangefinder window just right, that rangefinder patch inside the viewfinder can be kind of washed out and it makes it really hard to focus with. Now this has been my main camera for almost eight years and I've gotten really good at just dealing with it. And I know a lot of Leica shooters can be very, very, very particular about every little detail, but I've just always been kind of meh. It works, it's fine, and I just kind of deal with it. And I've heard from a lot of friends who say, yeah, it's totally worth it, you should do that. As much as you use your M6, it's worth the money, but I just have never taken the time to do it, mostly because I don't want to be without the camera for any period of time. But since it was already there, I figured I would go ahead and go for it, and now that it's back and in my hands, I can say, yes, it's definitely worth it. I kind of wish I would have done it sooner. I got really good at just dealing with the viewfinder flaring issues, but now, uh, uh, it's like I find myself expecting it in certain lighting conditions. When I pull the camera up to my eye, I'm kind of expecting to see that really washed out viewfinder patch, but so far it's been great and well worth the upgrade. I also had a few sets of frame lines removed or blocked out basically, uh, just for the sake of simplicity and a cleaner look through the viewfinder. When you attach a lens to the M6, you are always going to be seeing two sets of frame lines for two different focal lengths at the same time always. Depending on what lens you have attached, you might see the 28 and the 90, the 35 and the 135, or the 50 and the 75. I typically never use any long lenses on my M6. It's always a 35 or a 50. Uh, I've owned 28 millimeter lenses in the past, and I've tried a few of the longer lenses just for fun and, you know, for a little experiment. But 35 and 50, those are my go-tos. Those are my bread and butter. So I had the 75, the 90, and the 135 millimeter frame lines all removed or blacked out, which can be undone. So if I ever change my mind, I can actually get those frame lines back in the viewfinder. But now if I attach my 35, I'm only seeing 35 frame lines. Same goes for 50. It's just a much cleaner look through the viewfinder. It's less cluttered, less obstructed. If you're only using, you know, one or two focal lengths on your camera most of the time, I would definitely recommend this, especially considering it can always be undone. As a matter of fact, the removal of the frame lines is actually included for a free upgrade if you do go with the CLA at Red Dot Repair. Uh, and Jaden said that he actually has the restoration or putting the frame lines back in the viewfinder that's actually included in the warranty of the CLA if you ever you know tried it and then just changed your mind 
Now, just for full transparency, as I mentioned, Jaden did give me the CLA for free just as a gift and a way to say thank you for the videos, which again was incredibly kind of him. Jaden, thank you so much. Uh, but the viewfinder upgrade, the MP upgrade, I had that done for $150. Uh, it was $10 for a new lever screw because mine was cracked and needed replaced and $44 for the insured shipping. So that's what I paid. It's all out there. There you go. All in all, Jaden did an amazing job with my M6. It came back looking better. Well, maybe not better than ever. It was practically mint when I got it and it's, yeah, I've, I've, I've definitely used it, but it came back looking and feeling amazing. Uh, couldn't be happier with all the work that Jaden did. Um, he did not ask me to make this video. I asked if it was okay if I talked about it in a video, and he said, of course. Uh, it was just the fact that I got so many messages when I posted about it that I thought it would make sense to just share all the details here for anybody else who might want to have something similar done. It's really great to see somebody who is so young and so knowledgeable about this kind of stuff because a lot of the camera techs uh, that are repairing cameras like this, a lot of the older film cameras, they've obviously been around for a long time, so a lot of the techs have also been around for a long time so for someone so young and knowledgeable and passionate about this kind of thing uh, it's a really good thing because techs do not last forever as a matter of fact Jaden also says that even though it is red dot repair and he primarily focuses on Leica cameras he also repairs Hasselblad cameras Pentax 67 and Pentax 672 cameras so just keep that in mind if you ever have any of those cameras that need some work definitely give them a shout as a matter of fact, if you do have any questions for Jaden or want to know anything about what he could do for one of your cameras or anything like that, I'm going to put his email address below as well as his Instagram. So I told him that this could potentially, uh, you know, get more eyes on his work and get some more requests. And he said he is totally available for that. So uh, yeah, definitely give him a shout if you're interested. Also, while I'm here, I should probably mention uh, my signature camera strap with Sleepwalk. Uh, it's been really well received, so thank you so much to all of you guys who have purchased one. Uh, we started with a nice brown leather. Uh, that was kind of what we you know, thought of in our immediate idea to do a signature strap together. Uh, but we had a lot of feedback from people asking for a black version. So now we have this new black version of the strap. It's this nice, really thick and smooth leather. Uh, it's super, super nice. And we also now have three different lengths of the strap for you to choose. So we have a 40 inch, a 43 inch, and a 46 inch. The standard, kind of what I prefer my go-to strap Strap to be is 43 inches but for some people who might want it to be a little bit shorter or a little bit longer now you have that option so if you're interested in one of these straps grab them before they're gone I'll put links down in the description below uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments as well about all of the modifications done to this camera if you've ever done any kind of modifications to your own cameras let me know about them in the comments down below but that's it for today next week we will talk all about the SL2 and daily carry and all that stuff. So that's it. Love you guys. I'll see you next time.